Well, uh, as some of you may know, in the last 24 hours, Zimbabwean officials have labelled a second American man in connection with the alleged illegal hunting and killing of animals, animals in Zimbabwe. That's right. Since the death of Cecil the lion last week, officials in Zimbabwe have promised to crack down on the illegal poaching of animals and have ordered the suspension of lion, leopard and elephant hunting outside the Hwangi National Park. Well, here today to tell us about uh, her passionate work supporting African wildlife is the director of the Rwaha uh, Carnival Project. She's also a senior researcher at the Wild Crew Project associated, of course, with Oxford University here to give us a great idea of the strategies they're taking to help aid uh, and protect these animals is, of course, Amy Dickman. Amy, welcome, of course, back to Living the Life. Thank you very uh, much. It's good to be we're here. We're very honoured that you've come down on what is obviously a devastating story, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely the loss of any study animal is very distressing for the team involved and particularly for the Wangi Lion Project who've been you know, studying and tracking Cecil for many years since 2008. You know, the loss of an animal like that certainly has a big impact on that team. But I have to say that the reaction, the global reaction afterwards has been yeah. completely amazing yeah. to the entire team at Wild Crew, the Wildlife Conservation Research Unit at Oxford, just seeing how much public support there is for you know, curtailing illegal killing of wildlife for developing, you know, really long-term conservation strategies and wanting to change this problem into a solution. So that's really uplifting from a bad situation. Before I ask you about the overall project and what's happening with, mm -hmm. I mean, I know you're particularly involved in big cats. Yeah. Before I ask a little bit about that, you've got to clear up something for me. Mm -hmm. Is Cecil's brother alive or dead? Well, interesting. The line you're talking about is Jericho. Yeah, that's Who the is one. Cecil's coalition partner, not actually his brother. Not his brother. His his brother is dead, oh, but that was he died several years oh, ago right, from an outside the coalition. A few days after Cecil, there yeah. was this big story that said, we've just heard that Je Cecil's brother Jericho has exactly. also been killed now. No, and then they so said, no, we take that back, he's not been killed. Not at all. So when Jericho, sorry, when Cecil was first tracked, he was with another male, presumed to be his brother. Right. That male got killed by another coalition of lions, right. and then Cecil ended up alone. And actually, at some points, had some fights with Jericho's coalition. Right. Jericho's brothers ended up being killed, so Jericho and Cecil ended up sort of forming a coalition together, which isn't oh. uncommon in yeah. lion society because it's very important to have more than one male lion. And the sweetest thing I heard about that was that they said Jericho was raising Cecil's cubs. Well, in lion society, it's very likely that some of those cubs will also be Jericho's cubs right. because both the males will breed with the female. Yeah. So Cecil and Jericho will both have had interests in protecting those lionesses, right. protecting the cubs. Yeah. So I think the take-home message is that for the moment, Jericho is alive and well. Jericho's doing good. There don't seem to be other coalitions threatening them, and good. the cubs are doing well. Good. Thank God. Well, it, it is obviously amazing evolution, as you say, and, and the mm -hmm. way you know these animals are so intelligent. Why on earth somebody would want to, to kill them is just beside us. But what what was the contributing factor here do you think that actually led to this was it a case of somebody just being paid off i mean there's rumors of thirty thousand us dollars cash being paid and whatnot how come preventative measures that you guys work so hard to to, to do deliver are being obviously uh, bypassed in some way this is a very complicated situation i think that's something we need to take home from this that all kinds of issues come into play with maintaining large carnivores in the modern very human dominated landscapes so you've got protected areas like uh, like Wangi National Park. But lions like Cecil and Jericho and many others have large home ranges that will often span the boundary of the protected area and move into farmland, yeah, ranchland, where hunting is legal in some of those areas. So in this case, Cecil moved out of the park but onto areas which were actually well within his normal home range. And in that case, he encountered a big game hunter. He had done that many times before. He'd often moved out of the park. So the fact he was wearing a satellite collar didn't immediately alert anyone to the fact he was in, you know, danger in that instance. But it was just a case that in that moment he was, he happened to be killed by this American hunter. And it was illegal because there was no quota for the lion in that area. So that's what happened to Cecil. And I think Wild Crew's very long running work in Wangi, where it's worked for 20 years now, yeah. has really highlighted the fact that this is an ongoing problem for lions, that even in large protected areas, there are pressures on the edges, whether it be trophy hunting, illegal hunting, as in this case, or conflict with local people, 
or habitat loss or prey depletion, all yeah. those factors on the edge can kill lions and then other lions move out to fill that space. And of course, as you said, a lion doesn't recognize a, a boundary to a, to a national no. park. He's just going to wander over into what could be private land or, yeah. or unprotected land. Um, how much at risk are lions? I mean, we know the, the ongoing problem with tigers, with rhinos, uh, with, with many other. Lions themselves, you thought there's, there's plenty of them around, but is, is that an accurate description or, or, or should we be worried? It's a great point because for some reason people feel lions yeah. must be safe. You yeah. see lions everywhere, everywhere on yeah. everything. On every safari program That's there's a right. lion. However, I think most people would be horrified to know that by the most recent estimates, there are fewer lions left in the world than there are rhinos. No. And so no. now lions have declined by around just under half in the last 20 years, more than that in many populations in Africa. So the biggest and most important message that we can bring out of this is that lions are really in serious peril yeah. and we need work like the work Wild Crew is doing and this huge appeal that's happened, the donations to Wild Crew have been amazing to try to bring those people who are outraged by the plight of lions in general, yeah. how they can actually make a difference to enacting community conservation and scientifically driven conservation on the ground. Fantastic. Of course, uh, there's a fantastic crowdfunding uh, yeah. pledge you're going. We're yeah. looking forward to hearing more about that. You, of course, have worked with wild cats, uh, of course, and big cats. And, and many of your colleagues we see on often on, on documentaries, a lot of people have to gain trust of animals. That in itself must be an art of its kind as well. That's definitely a challenge, but interestingly, in modern conservation, I think the bigger challenge is often getting the trust of local communities, because in a world that is so human-dominated, with you know, 7 billion people rising to 9 billion by 2050, you, know, you don't want to impose external values on wildlife conservation to people who are living, still maintaining these animals like lions in their community. Yeah. So understanding how to build trust and rapport with those people so that you can work out strategies that work well for both wildlife and people is the ultimate goal, and it can be very challenging. What's the, what's the best thing that people can do? Because sometimes when you meet, we hear a story, Cecil is an amazing case, because I think the fact that he had a name somehow just galvanized attention and, and, and focused people's attention on, on the fact the plight of this lion. Lions are shot, as you said, and killed in, their, in vast numbers, very unfortunately. Mm -hmm. This one case really focused our attention. It gives people a sense that of, of being connected to the, to the issues. But what can people do really? If they want to, if they want to do something, yeah. if they want to be empowered to say, I can make a difference to a situation in Africa yeah. and help to save lions. Well, I think this appeal that's happening now as a result of Cecil's death is hugely empowering for everyone who has been affected by it. There's an appeal through Wild Crew, which is www.wildcrew, which is wildcru.org, uh, and that's raised already over half a million pounds from people who want to commit to lion conservation. And Wild Crew does very extensive lion conservation work across Africa with communities and people can really make a huge difference in that way. Which brings us back very nicely to our conservation ex expert over there. Sorry, you were just saying before the break how people can get involved. Your organisations themselves, I mean, uh, your, your work specifically is aimed mainly at large cats, isn't it? Yes, so I'm part of the Wildlife Conservation and Research Unit and that has a huge focus on carnivores. Uh, originally dogs, but now mainly big cats. So this whole book that Wild Crew is all about all kinds of different species they study from lions and tigers to tiny cats cod cods and palace cat that most people have never heard of a what cat a palace cat a palace cat in mongolia a very furry gray cat really uh, yeah i have to ask are cheetahs in there as well people cheetahs know are obsession. in there i worked on cheetahs <laughs> for six years so really? wildcrew does a huge array of very scientifically driven but also on the ground community conservation to try to give these cats a future for the long term. And so people getting involved is hugely important. And remind us again, how do people get involved? So people can get involved through the website. It's www.wildcrew.org. And there's an appeal on there for Cecil. And they can also get involved through the Oxford Thinking Campaign for Wild Crew in general. So, and the whole thing is run on philanthropy. So every dollar pound that people can give, it makes a huge difference to conservation. Fantastic.